Science 7, Quarter 2, Module 3, and Organized Life. What makes something alive? What characteristics define life? Ano bang meron sa mga bagay na may buhay? Ano ang mga katangian nito na wala sa mga bagay na walang buhay? In this module, we will discuss two things. First is the characteristics of life and the levels of organization of all living things. Para sagutin ang mga tanong na nabanggit, tignan natin ang mga sumusunod na larawan. Ang una ay ang cute na cute na panda bear toy. Ang ikalawa naman ay picture ng totoong panda bear. Alin sa dalawa ang living thing at alin ang non-living thing? Ang panda bear toy ay non-living thing. It has no life. At ang totoong panda bear naman ay living thing. Pero ano nga ba ang pagkakaiba ng living thing sa non-living thing? Meron tayong set of words na makikita sa screen. Alamin natin kung ito ay katangian ng non-living thing o katangian ng living thing. Una, sensitive. Ang ibig sabihin ng sensitive ay reactive to stimuli o nagre-react sa mga pangyayari sa paligid, kagaya ng biglaang pagpapago ng temperature. Which of the two is sensitive? It is the panda bear at yung toy is not sensitive. Yung toy, kahit ibalibag mo yan, ilagay mo sa ibabaw ng kalan, ilagay mo sa loob ng ref, hindi yan magre-react kasi non-living thing siya. Pero ang panda bear, ito ay nagre-react sa mga pagbabagong nangyayari sa paligid niya. Kapag biglang uminit o lumamig, magre-react ang katawan niya. Next is grow and develop. Alin sa dalawa ang hindi lumalaki at nadidevelop? Tama, ito ay yung toy. At yung panda bear naman ay lumalaki at nagdi-develop dahil ang cell niya sa loob ng katawan ay nagmumultiply. Pangatlo, homeostasis. It is the ability to balance and maintain constant internal conditions in the body to cope up with the environment. Ito ay kakayahang panatilihing balance ang kondisyon ng katawan para makasabay sa pagbabago sa paligid. Kasama dito ang pagpapanatiling regular at balanse ang, ang temperature ng katawan at mga substances katulad ng water, potassium, sodium, at glucose sa blood. So, alin sa dalawa ang sa tingin mo ay may homeostasis? Tama! Iyon ay ang living thing o ang panda bear. Sa kabilang banda, ang laruan naman ay walang homeostasis. Ang next word ay reproduce or reproduction. It is the process of producing new individual of the same kind. In other words, ito ay proseso ng pagpaparami o pagkakaroon ng anak. Alin sa dalawa ang kayang magreproduce? Siyempre, ito ay ang polar bear. At ang laro ang polar bear naman ay hindi makakapag-reproduce. Katulad ng homeostasis, regulation or regulatory process is the ability to control the system from within to maintain the balance. Ito ay pagkakaroon ng sistema sa katawan na kumokontrol sa internal condition nito kapag nagkaroon ng mga pagbabago sa loob at labas nito. Example of this regulatory process is the regulation of body heat. Living things has regulatory process, so this word falls on the panda bear, while the toy has no regulatory processes. And lastly, order. Pag sinabi natin order ay following an order o pagkakaayos mula sa pinakasimple papunta sa pinakakomplex. From simple single cell, Complex, multi-cell. A living thing has these characteristics, while non-living thing has no order. Let's sum up the characteristics of living things. Number one, sensitivity. Living things react to certain stimuli. Number two, regulation. It is the ability of all organisms to carry out regulatory processes among its bodily functions.
ito ay pagkontrol sa mga kondisyon sa ating katawan para mapanatili ang balance. Number three, homeostasis. The ability of organisms to maintain balance and constant internal condition. Number four, growth and development. Living things are capable of growing. Number five, reproduction. Living organisms are able to reproduce and pass traits from parents to offspring. And number six, order. Organisms follow an order of complexity from single cell to multicellular complex organism. Levels of biological organization. Since organisms follow an order of complexity from single cell to multicellular organism, we will be discussing the different levels of organization of all living things. Let's start from the simplest, which is the cell. This is a single cell. Cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. Ang biological process ng isang living thing, like growth and development, reproduction, homeostasis, ay nagsisimula sa cell. May mga organisms na binubuo lang ng isang cell. Unicellular organisms ang tawag natin sa kanila. Examples ng unicellular organisms are paramecium, amoeba, bacteria, and yeast. Complex organisms like human are composed of more than one cells. Ang tawag naman dito ay multicellular organisms, kagaya ng plants, animals, and human. Kapag nagkaroon ng damage sa cell ng isang organism, ang mga susunod na level nito ay maaapektuhan. Alam mo pa na ang human body ay binubuo ng iba't ibang klaseng cells. Depende sa kung saan body parts sila makikita at kung anong kanilang ginagawa. Most recent estimates put the number of cells in a human body at around 37 trillions. Ang dami, di ba? Meron tayong cells for muscles, skeleton, skin, at marami pang iba. A group of similar cells that work together for forming a specialized function is called tissue. Yung group of cells for muscles ay tinatawag nating muscle tissue. There are three types of muscle tissue. Those are skeletal muscle tissue, which can be attached to bones, smooth muscle tissue, which can line the esophagus and other organs, and cardiac muscle tissue. Ang cardiac muscle tissue is the tissue found in the heart. Kaya ang heart natin ay nag expand at nagko-contract is because of this tissue. When one or more tissues are combined to perform one or more related function, we call it an organ. An example of this is the heart. The group of cardiac muscle tissue working together made up the heart. Another examples of organs found in the human and animal bodies are kidneys, brain, lungs, and many others. These are what we call internal organs or organs na nasa loob ng katawan. Meron din namang mga external organs like skin and other sense organs. For the plants, they have the following organs. Roots, stem, leaves, fruits, flowers, and many others. These organs perform important role in making an organism alive. Kaya naman, importante na pangalagaan natin ang ating mga organs. Dahil any damages sa kahit anong organ ay magkukos ng problem sa atin as a whole. When organs are grouped to perform a common or set of function, it is called organ system. Or, mas kilala natin bilang body systems. Ang example ng organ system is the circulatory system. This circulatory system is responsible for the transport of oxygen, nutrients, and other substances to cells and carries away wastes. Ito ay binubuo ng tatlong mahahalagang organs. Those are blood vessels, such as arteries, veins, and capillaries, heart, and blood. 
Other examples of organ systems found in human are skeletal system, muscular system, digestive system, respiratory system, nervous system, at marami pang iba. Para naman sa mga plants, ang root and shoot systems ang makikita natin dito. Ang shoot system ay ang above ground system ng plant o yung system na nasa ibabaw ng lupa. Ang root system naman ay ang underground system o ang system sa ilalim ng lupa. Ang root at shoot system ay parehong mahalaga para ang plants ay lumaki at mabuhay. Organism is an individual living thing composed of several organ systems that work together. An example of this is a human being. Other examples of organisms are bacteria, archaea, protists, fungi, plants, and animals. Some of these are microorganisms such as bacteria na hindi natin makikita with our naked eye. An organism living with other organisms of the same species is called population. Kapag ang isang organism ay nakatira sa isang area, kasama ang iba pang organism na kapareho niya, ito ay tinatawag nating population. Halimbawa, ay ang human population na nakatira sa Metro Manila. Dito sa picture, makikita natin ang apat na group ng iba't ibang organisms. Merong population 1 na binubuo ng mga octopus, population 2 ng mga seahorses, population 3 ng mga sharks, and population 4 ng crabs. Again, pag sinabi nating population, ito ay group of organisms na pare-pareho ng uri na nakatira sa isang area at the same time. Kapag ang magkakaibang population na ito ay nakatira sa isang specific area at nag interact sa isa't isa, ito ay tinatawag nating community. Community is a group of different populations living and interacting with each other in an area. Halimbawa, dito sa picture, makikita natin ang population ng human at population ng iba't ibang halaman. Ito ay isang community. For another example, these organisms live in the ocean. Makikita natin na may iba't ibang population ito. Population ng mga octopuses, population ng sharks, population ng seahorses, at population ng crabs. Ang mga ito ay bumubuo sa isang community. Ecosystem naman ang tawag natin sa community ng mga organisms na nag interact sa mga non-living things sa environment. Ecosystem is the interaction between living organisms in their abiotic or non-living environment. Halimbawa nito ay ang tropical rainforest. Sa mga gubat, makikita natin ang iba't ibang uri ng plants, animals, and even human. Para mabuhay, kailangan nila ng mga non-living things sa environment, katulad ng hangin, tubig, at lupa. Ang ecosystem ay binubuo ng dalawang bahagi. Una ay ang living things na tinatawag ding biotic factors. Examples are plants, animals, decomposers, and microbes. Pangalawa ay ang non-living things, also known as the abiotic factors, katulad ng air, soil, water, sunlight, minerals, and temperature. Kapag wala ang mga abiotic factors na ito, hindi mabubuhay ang mga living things na nakaasa dito. May dalawang uri ng ecosystems. Ito ay ang artificial ecosystem or man-made ecosystem such as garden, aquarium, crop field, at zoo. Ito ay man-made o gawa ng tao at meron ding natural ecosystem. Katulad ng forest, ocean, lake, and desert. Ito yung ecosystem kahit wala ang intervention ng tao ay magsusurvive. And lastly, biosphere. It consists of all life on Earth and all the places where life exists. Example of this is our planet Earth. All ecosystems are interrelated to one another, and it is important 
napanatilihin natin ang balance sa nature. So those are the different levels of organization of living things. Again, these are number one, cell. The smallest and basic structural and functional unit of life. Number two, tissue. It is a group of cells working together to perform specific function. Number three, organ. A group of tissues working together to perform one or more related functions. Number four, organ system. Group of organs working together. Number five, organism. An individual living thing composed of several organ systems. Number six, population. Group of organisms of the same kind living together in an area. Seven, community. Group of populations living and interacting with one another. Number eight, ecosystem. The interaction between living organisms and their non-living environment. And number nine, biosphere. All ecosystems interacting with one another. It is all the places where life exists. With that, let's try to answer the following exercises. Identify the level of biological organization being described in each number. Number one, mango trees in Gimaras. Ang sagot ay population dahil ang pinag-uusapan natin ay isang uri lang ng organism. Number two, mangrove forest in Palawan. Ito ay ecosystem. Para mag-survive ang mangrove forest, kailangan ng water, air, sunlight, and other factors. Ang ecosystem is the interaction between living and non-living things. Number three, heart responsible for blood circulation, blood pressure, and blood supply. The answer is organ. Number four, school of fish in the Tabataha Reef. Ang meaning ng school of fish ay group of the same fish species swimming together in synchrony. Kaya ang sagot dito is population. Number five. The planet Earth. It is where life exists, kaya ang sagot ay biosphere. Number six, an individual human being is an organism. Seven, leaves of the plant performing photosynthesis. It is an organ. Number eight, smallest fundamental unit of a living individual capable of carrying out its own processes? The answer is cell. Number nine, group of cells functioning as a whole. It is a tissue. And number 10, the single tomato plant planted in the backyard. The answer will be organism. Now, let's discuss the activities in your module 3. Sa activity 1 entitled, Your Hand Do the Talking, maghahanap kayo ng mga pictures ng examples ng iba't ibang levels of biological organization for plants and animals. Kung walang magazines, pwede din kayong magprint at gugupitin ang mga pictures na iyon at ididikit sa table katulad ng nasa module ninyo. Halimbawa, sa example ng animal cell, didikit nyo yung picture kagaya nito. At sa plant cell naman, ang gaya nito. Kung walang magazines at hindi makakapag-print, pwede rin i-drawing ang mga examples sa activity na ito. Sa activity number 2 naman, complete the following paragraph by filling in the missing terms. Sa screen, makikita nyo ang list of words na pwede nyong pagkunan ng sagot para dito. Halimbawa, Sa unang sentence, nakalagay, the blank is the fundamental unit of structure and function of life. Ang sagot na ilalagay mo ay cell. For activity number 3, kukompletohin natin ang crossword puzzle. Take note of the following corrections. 
sa clue na makikita sa number 1 across. Ito dapat ang nakalagay. Composed of one or more types of tissues that perform one or more related functions. Sa mismong crossword puzzle naman, sa number 3, pakidagdagan ng isa pang box sa dulo nito. At yung given letter na T ay gawin ninyong I. Sa activity na ito, yung nasa baba ang iyong magiging clues. Sa across, ito yung mga words na horizontal o pahiga. Yung down naman is pababa. Halimbawa, sa down number 9, ang statement ay basic structural and functional unit of life. Ang sagot ay cell. Iyon ang ilalagay nyo sa box 9 pababa. Sa activity number 4, ipapakita mo kung paanong ikaw bilang isang mag-aaral ay makakatulong sa pangangalaga ng ating biological organization o ng ating biosphere. Pwede kang gumawa ng maikling video para ipakita ito o gumawa ng collage tungkol dito. Para makagawa ng collage, maghahanap ka ng mga pictures na may kinalaman sa biosphere o sa nature. Ididikit mo ang mga picture na ito sa isang band paper. Pipili ka ng pattern o shape na gagawin mo gamit ang mga pictures. Ang example ng collage ay ang mga ito. So check your understanding, susulat mo yung mga level of biological organizations na i-describe sa bawat number. Katulad ng ginawa natin kanina sa exercises. So dear students, maari nyo nang simula ng pagsagot ng inyong module. If you have questions regarding this video, leave your comment below. Or contact your teacher right away. Thank you.